this God, this God is the same God who allowed the walls of Jericho to come tumbling down. And saints, those walls in our lives, those walls that are, are preventing us from progressing, those walls of instability, those walls of self-doubt, the walls and barriers that we face in our jobs, at school, with our families, with our children, in our marriages, walls of sickness, walls of loneliness, walls of depression. God will help us to break down these walls. And if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the eight and 40th chapter of the book of Psalms, reading from the first verse through to the end. <clears throat> That's the eight and 40th chapter, reading from the first verse through to the end. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the kings were assembled, they passed by together. They saw it and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there and paid as a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ship of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever, Selah. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Mark he well her bulwarks, consider her palaces, that he may tell it to the generation following. 14 and last verse. For this God, our God, forever and ever, he will be our guide even unto death. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and hearer of his own holy words. And for this morning, I just want to pay a little bit of attention to the last verse. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. For this God. Not any other gods that you may have heard others talking about. Not Baal, the god of the Canaanites, or Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, nor Milcom, the god of the Ammonites, but this god. This god who is from everlasting to everlasting. This god who will forgive us of our sins. This God who is a miracle working, change, chain breaking, restorer of faith kind of God. This God who, who knows that it's because of his mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions, they fail not. This God who we can boldly and confidently say he's gonna do it. We heard the sermon from the elder recently telling us that God's going to do it. 
And when I heard it, I, I, I rejoiced in my heart. When I heard it, I'm reminded of the song that says, I know God is going to do it. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to fix it. I only know God's going to make a way for me. I know he's going to do it. So help me sing victory. And the latter part of the scripture tells us not only is this God our God forever and ever, but he will. Hmm. He will be our guide even unto death. My God. Say so Matthew 8, 27, what, what manner of man is this? And 1 John 3, 1, what manner of love is this? This God, this God, saints, but this God, he will be our guide. I don't even have a text for you this morning. But if you had to take something, whether you want to take but this God or whether you want to take he will be our guide, I don't know what you want to take the text as. But I know that there is something here for you. And a few weeks ago, I was watching a video of this Paralympic sprinter by the name of David Brown. He's one of the fastest or possibly the fastest visually impaired sprinter in the world. And as I was watching the <laughs> video, I was thinking about how difficult this, this must be for him. I, I don't know if you've ever tried closing your eyes and walking in a straight line. You, you probably thought you were walking in a straight line, but in reality, you may have long gone of course because our spatial awareness becomes imbalanced. When we lose, when we temporarily lose one of our senses, we are not in alignment. We start going off course. And so the sprinter who happened to be blind, in order for him to run and keep in his lane, and as we talk about keeping his lane, I remember Deacon Reynolds. Deacon Reynolds, please attest to this if you're online. I remember you preached a sermon to us about staying in our lane. Keep in our lane. So in order for David to keep in his lane and not be disqualified from the race, he had to have someone beside him. He had to have a guide. And this person in the video had a brightly colored vest on. And on it were the words written in big, bold capital letters, G-U-I-D-E, -E, guide. And I also saw that David's left hand was tied to his guide's right hand as they were running together. And as I sat and I watched this video, I was genuinely pleased and happy for David. As I'm sure being the fastest sprinter in his category didn't happen overnight because you know he still had to put in the hard work. He still had to be dedicated, but, but he did it. And he overcame his obstacles. He didn't dwell on the fact that he was blind. He didn't live in self-pity, but, but instead he, he did something about it. He couldn't change the fact that he was blind, but, but he got himself a guide. His guide, the one in the background, the one that is tied to him. In my opinion, he also needs, he also needs recognition as he was literally running the same time as David. But, but he accepted it wasn't about him. 
He was there simply to keep David in his lane, to motivate and encourage him. As throughout the race, I could hear him saying, he kept on saying, go David, run David, and cheering him along to the very end. This short video helped to put into perspective that this is how Jesus is with us too. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 1, 5 precept, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. He's known about us way before our conception because he made us and not we ourselves. He formed us. He molded us, he shaped us, and he fashioned us. Jesus tied himself to us, just as how the guide tied himself to David. Because he also knows at times that we cannot clearly see. Our eyes are open but they may be covered with, with, with scales, which then causes us to be blinded by the things and ways of the world. We know the story of the blind man in St. John chapter nine. If you don't know it, please, during these holidays, spend some time and have a read of it. Verse six tells us that when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Jesus tied himself to us so that he will always be there with us, especially during the times when we too need the clay of spittle on our eyes to help restore us spiritually and our physical sight. God knew that we will all need help and guidance. Every single one of us need him and need his help. And so he selflessly, he selflessly gave his son, St. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, ever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I have three sons. And when I think, which, which, which one would I give? I'm struggling. I would struggle. I couldn't answer. But he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son to die for us and for our sins so that we too may have a saving chance. God gave us our very own guide, one that we cannot miss. Because just like David's guide, he had a brightly colored vest on with the big letters written all over it so that we couldn't miss him. This is how our guide, Jesus Christ, is with us. He's there visible and bold for everyone to see. He cannot be mistaken because there is none other like him. Jesus is our guide. And so I say to you, let him be your guide. Let him be your guide district. Let him be your guide, Saint Zoe. Let him be your guide, Grandmother Sarah, Sister Elder, Maui, Saint Penyo. It doesn't matter who we are, saints. Let him be your guide. 
Stop taking all these battles and, and these heavy loads on by yourself. It was never meant for you to carry alone, never mind to carry. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And if you don't know how to pray or what to pray or ask God about, then ask the good Lord. We heard this sermon. Ask the Lord to teach you, teach you how to pray. And so I'm here to tell you to take all your trials, all your tribulations to your very own personal guide. As Saint Sumerai call him, Saint Shumarai calls him King JC. Let King Jesus be your guide. He says, Come unto me, all he that are heavy laden, and I will, I will give you rest. This battle is it's not yours. It's not your saints. Why are you taking it all by yourself? It's the Lord. And during these holy days, and during these holy days and thereafter, when you pray, remember to pray to the Lord for guidance. Pray to God and thank him for sending his son to navigate us through this world. Just like how he guided the children of Israel again and again. Just like how he guided them to safety. Just like how he guided Nehemiah in, in building the walls of Jerusalem. Just like how he guided Joshua, Moses, Aaron, and all the saints of old through their various battles. Even, even when the odds were stacked high against them, God, God guided them. And so, so pray to God. Pray to God, saints, that, that he will always be our guide. Pray to God and thank him for sending us our own personal guide because we need him now more than ever. We need him now in these perilous times that we are living in. We, leave, we need him now because we cannot do this by ourselves. We need him now because he is the God above all gods. And so I say to you, pray to God that he will always be our guide, your guide. I'm coming to the end. David had a trusting relationship with his guide. He had to. He had to have, he had to have a trust in. He had to trust him. Because his guide would confidently take on the role of his eyes. And this is, and this is how we need to build a trusting relationship with God. It, you know, if, if you are one of those people who have trusting issues for whatever the reason is, then I pray, I pray that God you will let God do the work. You will let God work on those issues because I can vouch for him. He doesn't need me to. He doesn't need me, but, but I can vouch for him that he will never, he will never leave us. He will never leave you nor forsake you. The song, we, we sing the song in church from time to time. Have you ever been hungry and Jesus didn't feed you? And it goes on to say, I have, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seeds out begging for bread. For this I know, when your friends and your families when they turn their backs on you, when they just don't want to see you or deal with your situation anymore, 
when you feel like you have no escape or, or nowhere to turn, this Bible, this scripture tells us that this God, this God will be with us forever and ever, and he will. This four-letter word will is a surety. It's not a question. I'm not asking you. The Bible says it. He will be our guide. And as I was, as I, as I was thinking and I was praying to God to just help me put my thoughts together, help me put the thoughts that he wants me to bring forward. I thought on the other side, I thought about, oh my goodness, what would it be like not having a guide? I mean, I know I would immediately feel lost. It's, it's, like, it's like driving a car to an unfamiliar place with no sat nav or no GPS and trying to, trying to use a map. Map, I mean, what is this? Do we still have maps? <laughs> It's like trying to use a map to navigate your way to your destination. The thought of this actually using a paper map to get me from point A to point B, you know, it's already causing my stress levels to rise. As I know, I know that I will definitely, this is not a question, I'm using the term again. I will definitely get lost multiple times. Multiple times along this journey, I will get lost because not only am I not great with following driving directions, but I would also struggle to read the map. I, I, I would be thinking long and hard on this journey. Do I need to make this journey? You know, can I just wait till my husband gets home and then he could do the driving? Or better yet, can I call on my uncles? Can I call on Deacon Pinnock or can I call on any uncles close by to, to just, just drive me? I would be thinking long and hard if I needed to take this journey. But when we have the option of having a navigation system for our journeys, you know, our, our, our stresses fade. We don't even think about it. We don't even worry about it because we know that you know, the sat nav, the GPS, it will sort out everything and all we need to do is just follow. If we are given, and so my question to you this morning, saints, is if we are given a guide, why wouldn't we take it if it means making our lives and journey easier? For me, this is something that we call a no-brainer. I don't even need to think about it. I don't even need to, it's a no-brainer. I definitely would take it. Jesus was given to us by God. Let us take him as our guide. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 11. And the Lord shall guide mm. thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a water garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. No matter how the winds and the tempests may blow, saints, <coughs> hold fast, hold fast and never let go, and remember, he is the God that parted the Red Sea, and if you allow us, and if he allowed us to walk on dry land, then guess what? He can, and he will part our very own Red Seas if, if, if we trust him and continue to let him be our guide. This God, this God, it's the same God who allowed the walls of Jericho to come tumbling down. And saints, those walls in our lives, those walls that are, are preventing us from progressing, 
those walls of instability, those walls of self-doubt, the walls and barriers that we face in our jobs, at school, with our families, with our children, in our marriages, walls of sickness, walls of loneliness, walls of depression. God will help us to break down these walls. I know he can. I know he will. I know he has. I know, I know, I know he will make our lives brand new if, if, if says, if we just let him lead the way. It doesn't matter what, I, it doesn't matter what it is you are going through. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. We don't need to know, but, but the most important person who needs to know is your guy. And he already knows. And I say to you that he will take care of you. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but if you are hearing me, he will take care of you. He's gonna do it. Let us boldly and confidently say, and believe this now that God's gonna do it. Our challenges are but temporary. No one said this road would be easy. No one said this journey would be easy. But I know, I know with Jesus as our guide, he can. And he will command the storm to stop. The raging sea to just be calm. And even the sun to stand still. All of us need a guide. All of us need a guide through this life. In this journey, there are too many twists and turns and, and so many unknowns, so many roads we can take uh, and so many leads off that we can take, but we need a God. We need this God the omniscient and omnipotent God to guide us, to help us to know which way to take. The scripture tells us in, in St. Matthew 7, 13 to 14, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many, many there be which go in thereat because straight, straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few, few there be that find it. Guide us, O oh Lord. Guide us, O oh Lord, to get on this straight path and stay on this path that leads to everlasting life. Uh, allowing the Lord to be established as our guides, begin with that commitment, begin with that trust. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 tells us to trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. We are a singing church. We sing time to time. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. You know the song. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, I am weak, but, but thou art mighty. And so I beg you, Lord, to just 
hold us. Hold us with your powerful hand. Guide me, O oh Lord. Guide us, O oh Lord. Let God be your guide. This is my humble prayer. And this is the message that was placed in, in this heart of mine. For me, for you, for each and every one of us. On this second day of the seven days of holy convocation. One of the messages for you is, let God be your guide.